I had my business, I had my kids, I had my husband. I just thought that this is it. My life is perfect now. And one night I went into labor and I thought, wow, I'm kind of early because I was. it was about a month before my due date. So we went to the hospital and uh, they put the heart monitor on and the picture came up of the baby and I just looked at it and I could kind of tell like she wasn't moving. And the woman on the with the heart monitor, she just looked at me and said, I'm sorry. After she died, everything came crashing down. I lost my house from going through the separation. Very scared and anxious as a single mom, like not knowing how to get by. I mean, it was very difficult. I was working full time. I had a two hour commute to Jersey City when I first moved here. Back and forth, I had to pick them up at three different places, back and forth, make dinner. Financially, it was tight. I felt like everything I was so excited about that I had accomplished was just being taken away all at the same time. Within a six month period, all those things were gone. I always was a person that prided myself that like I have really strong faith. Like I would literally like probably brag about it to people. You know, I was very like not very humble. <laughs> But when this happened, it just shook everything, everything. When you go through a loss like this, it just changes you. You're literally, like they say, you're changed forever. It, it just, you're not the same person after going through it. When I stopped going to church, I stopped praying because I just became angry at God. And I felt like this was almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, see, you're alone, you're rejected. So I ended up uh, getting a job up here in Jersey City. I basically had to start my life all over again. Somehow I heard about this support group at my local parish, Notre Dame in North Caldwell. I was able to see other people that were going through similar sufferings that I was going through. I started to have hope for the first time. One of the sessions, they had the pastor come from the church. I hadn't gone to confession in a really long time. Like I had cut God out. I, I just, I didn't go. And so when I went, the pastor showed me a statue of the Jesus with the lost sheep. And he had it right in front of him when he was talking to me. And he, after I did my confession, he showed me the statue, he pointed to it and he said, this is you, this sheep, and this is Jesus. No matter what your life is like, he wants you to come to him. And he welcomes you back to, to his church and he welcomes you back to him. And I knew it was true. Like in that moment, I became the lost sheep. I was like, I'm back. I'm finally free. And I'm finally able to come back to the church. I didn't know how else to get through it. And I knew if I took the Eucharist, like, I would feel at least that peace. So even though things around me were still chaotic, I was different. So I saw the job description in the Family Life Office, and I said, this is amazing. This is the perfect job for me. So the funny thing is, is my position oversees that group that I started going to. In the support group, you're given permission to grieve. When someone's going through their cross, we need to sit with them in the silence and in the pain, like sit with them and help them carry their suffering instead of just trying to fix the person. When I was married, I would have never thought about the, the widow or like the single parent, because I was kind of in my own little world thinking, you know, everything's great. I was very focused on what I was doing and me and my, my marriage. And once this happened, I started having more compassion for people and started seeing that there's other people suffering because I went through it, so there must be other people out there. It's really important that they know that God is still with them. Even though they don't feel him, he's still with them. 
and to be the hands and feet of Christ, you know, to make sure that the suffering doesn't suffer alone.